Most people have never heard of pareidolia, but nearly everyone has experienced it. Anyone who has looked at the moon and spotted two eyes, a nose, and a mouth has felt the pull of pareidolia. It's the imagined perception of a pattern or meaning where it does not actually exist, according to the World English Dictionary. It's picking a face out of a knotted tree trunk or finding zoo animals in the clouds. German design studio Onformative is undertaking perhaps the world's largest and most systematic search for pareidolia. Their Google Faces program will spend the next few months sniffing out face-like shapes in Google Maps. This phenomena of seeing faces was also attributed to the very famous face of Cydonia that was found on Mars. The face was first imaged in detail by the Viking 1 and Viking 2 orbiters. 18 images were taken by the orbiters. Viking 1 launched on July 20, 1976 and Viking 2 orbited Mars on July 25, 1978. The striking likeness the apparent natural formation had to a face allowed the image to quickly gain notoriety around the world. The possibility of ancient ruins being on Mars is not a hypothesis held by modern science. And it is certainly not a scenario that NASA endorses. Neither does any other space-going nation appear to have any interest in investigating the possibility. Many conspiracies have surfaced over the years regarding covert operations in search of exactly such ruins on our neighboring planets. Many claiming black operations have occurred, such as an Apollo 20 program with some rather convincing CGI hoaxes subsequently being created. Regardless, what a number of authentic researchers have managed to accomplish by just studying imagery of Mars and also of historical knowledge of the region held here on Earth is quite remarkable. Subsequent orbital imagery of the Cydonia region of Mars have attempted to debunk the face as just being a product of light angle. However, Thankfully, people did not let these debunking efforts dissuade them from further investigations of the area. Some researchers who were versed in the works of Zachariah Sitchin connected the location to the possible burial site a king. Recorded within the 10th Sumerian tablet, Sitchin had apparently translated a passage regarding a god known as Alalu, who requested upon death to be buried where he would be able to peer into space gazing upon earth forever. Although many claim Sitchin's vague understanding of the writings may have led to mistranslations, Sitchin became convinced that this 10th tablet also laid claim to the king being the constructor of the pyramids. People who knew these fragments of information actually connected a network of apparent extremely ancient pyramidal ruins resting very near to the face. These remnants of once great structures undoubtedly align with the star constellation of Pleiades. What is astonishing is that these ruins would not have been discovered without Sitchin's translations. Was Sitchin right all along? Is this really proof of ancient ruins on our nearest neighbor? The alignments are certainly compelling and must be more than just coincidence. As always, thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. The Red Planet Although many people assume it to be the closest planet to our own, it is in fact Venus which comes closer to the Earth during its orbit around our star. Mercury is the closest planet not only to Earth, but to every other planet in the solar system at one time or another. Yet these giants barren landscapes incapable of supporting life. This reality is partly why Mars is so often the focus of man's attention in regard to our solar system's planetary bodies. With a partial atmosphere, and thanks to the Mars rovers, proven to possess water, it is a far less violent planet, not scorched like Mercury or filled with toxins like Venus. As such, for many years now, as the human population has exploded and modern technology has made self-sustaining, isolated life-supporting systems a reality, the search for suitable places for future colonization of the solar system has become a more and more popular subject of study. One of the most important additional factors for possible candidates for this exploration of space is the planet's distance from the Sun, nicknamed the Goldilocks Zone. Just like porridge being just right, Mars is located within a specific distance from the Sun capable of sustaining life. And although space agencies and other fields of funded institutions staunchly deny the possibility of it once having been inhabited, possibly even by man himself, dismissing such ideas as preposterous, Mars's desolate red oxide landscape 
is in fact uncannily similar to Earth's possible future appearance, if humans were to continue unsustainable activities or a cataclysmic event were to occur. Thus, is it so preposterous to ponder the possibility that the planet we see before us today was in fact transformed into its lifeless form by an event or possibly past insatiable appetites for its resources by an ancient civilization which once called it home? Could the Cambrian explosion, the sudden appearance of advanced life on our planet, be evidence of terraforming? Could there have also been a similar, yet now hidden, mammalian explosion? Indicating our own sudden arrival here on Earth, after it artificially became capable of sustaining us. An orchestrated introduction of a complex food chain by ancient man, who were in reality Martians. We have in the past covered some very strange occurrences on Mars. One in particular, suggesting that possible black operations to colonize the Red Planet are already underway. The Mars rovers were given an expected lifespan of just 90 days. This estimation was based upon the notorious dust storms which choke its surface. Yet Spirit lasted an incredible seven years, surviving until 2010, and Opportunity only recently ceased operation. This remarkable longevity, solely a result of what has become known as cleaning events, which for 14 years were repeatedly experienced and documented. Yet what is most curious regarding these events is that they always occurred while the rovers were offline. In July 2007, during the fourth mission extension, severe Martian dust storms blocked sunlight to the rovers and threatened the ability of the craft's survival. However, when the dust storms lifted and the rovers came back online, something had cleaned them of nearly all debris. On May 1, 2009, during its fifth mission extension, Spirit became stuck in the soft soils of Mars. Strangely, it seems, because the rover was not moving, it missed subsequent cleaning events. Did our mysterious helper assume it had died? Join us in our next video, which will be an expose of artifacts, features, ancient testimonies and satellite anomalies, and many other factors which support the conspiracy of secret Martian inhabitation supporting the hypothesis of an ancient Martian civilization that once called our red neighbor home. Evidential arguments we find highly compelling. We often cover the extraordinary yet unexplained ruins that can be found all over our planet. However, as many of these ancient sites indicate, our ancient lost ancestors clearly had substantial advanced understandings we are yet to unravel. We feel, it is clear, that they were indeed technologically superior to us, the modern man. Thus, the question we must ask, just as we are, was this clearly advanced civilization capable of space travel? If so, then why did they not survive the mass exodus, which many feel befell the rest of these lost civilizations? Many people throughout history have been extremely interested in the concept of inhabiting other planets. In many ways, the habitation of other space bodies is a sound strategical contingency for species survival. For in a world at the mercy of other space bodies hurtling through the cosmos, not putting all of one's eggs in one basket will always be a great survival technique, giving the species twice the chance of survival. Mars, our nearest neighbor, has been the subject of countless theories involving past civilization, ancient or human, and the focus of NASA's most expensive space exploration missions, spending vast sums in the pursuit of several successful touchdown, and indeed, as mentioned, for a good reason. And just like the many ancient, advanced, unexplained features upon our planet, any past inhabitation, no matter how primitive, would not only be ignored, but logically, much more easily suppressed than the finds we share which can be explored by us here on Earth. For exactly the same motives as ruins on Earth are ignored, any ancient civilization that could be found upon Mars would meet the same fate. For the proof of ancient civilization, 
predating that which academia has condemned themselves to dating and explaining as our more primitive modern ancestors work, has to be suppressed. Academia must protect public confidence for the protection of current, profitable theory. Was Mars once inhabited? Was it inhabited by us? Perhaps the most worrying question surrounding all of this, with academia so hell-bent on appearing correct, will we, as a species, ever find out? Hey guys, Matt from Mystery History here. So today I wanted to share with you a confession. A confession by this man. His name is Dr. Allah Shaheen, and he is one of the world's leading Egyptologists. He is also head of the Cairo University Archaeology Department. He rubs shoulders with top Egyptian government figures and members of the Egyptian state of antiquities. If anyone knows about Egypt's most inner kept secrets, it's this guy. In December 2010, he was hosting a conference to a select group of delegates about ancient Egyptian architecture, when he let something slip. He admitted to being complicit in the covering up of an astonishing secret. He has since retracted the statement and is now denying he ever made it, however, during the conference, a handful of press reporters were present. They all ran the same story, shortly after the conference, all quoting the same remark, making it rather difficult to believe that he didn't actually say it. In what I can only imagine was a misjudgment of trust, when questioned regarding the possibility of alien involvement in the construction of ancient Egypt, he not only confirmed this to be the case, but confessed to knowing, and I quote, there's still something inside the pyramid that is not of this world. In a previous video, I shared how the tomb of Osiris, once believed to have been a mythical god from Egyptian legend, a belief Egyptian antiquities would like to keep alive, was actually discovered recently. The tomb was found by traversing an access tunnel system just a few inches in diameter. From the moment this impossible access passage was discovered, they quietly knew they had found something amazing. The moment Egyptian authorities finally managed to get a robot with a camera into the tomb, a complete media blackout descended upon Egypt. Walls were constructed around the tomb and no information regarding the find was shared for several weeks. When the world was eventually allowed near the site, the tomb was found to have been conveniently empty. No explanation as to how grave robbers could have possibly got into the tomb has ever been produced. Was Osiris an alien? Was our previous research bang on the money? Even in Egyptian legend, the figure known as Thoth was said to have allowed beings such as Ra and Osiris to exist in our realm. Were ancient Egyptian artists accurate in their depictions of these beings as hybrids? If, as Dr. Allah Shahid states, along with ancient Egyptian literature, that there is indeed something otherworldly under the Great Pyramid, could it really be a portal? And if it is, why hide it? Regardless of what it is, they are definitely hiding something. What other worldly thing do you think is hidden under the Great Pyramid? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, take care. The Space Research Institute at the Russian Academy of Sciences recently published a series of photographs taken by the Venera probe over 30 years ago on the surface of our closest neighbor, Venus. The photos, according to Leonid Ksanformaliti, present evidence of living organisms upon Venus, one of the most inhospitable places for human life in the solar system. The second planet from the Sun, it's believed to have once been Earth-like, although the constant temperature there now is around 480 degrees Celsius, hot enough to melt lead, even hotter than Mercury, which is tremendously closer to our Sun. According to Xan Formaliti, who is Doctor of Physical and Mathematical Science for the Institute of Space Research, the images reveal the movement of extremely strange objects on the surface of Venus. Predictably, NASA, along with many other institutes of research, have attempted to debunk his discovery, stating that the objects are nothing more than a lens cap and noise generated by the second-hand pictures, claiming that some of the objects are not present in the original images. Sam Formaliti believes that in the images, a scorpion-shaped creature, a disc-shaped object, and a black object are visible moving in front of the onboard camera of the Venera 13. Quoting Kassan Formaliti in an article for the Russian journal Solar System Research magazine, they all just emerge, fluctuate, and then disappear. 
What if we forget about the currently held theory regarding the non-existence of life on Venus and boldly suggest that these objects, these morphological features captured within these images could allow us to say that they are indeed living, end quote. Scientists have not ruled out that once, in the very distant past, Venus might have supported life in a time when the planet had giant oceans before the greenhouse effect created the temperatures that rule over the planet today. However, they firmly refute the possibility of living creatures alive on the planet's surface today. As Ivan, writer over at Ancient Origins, eloquently put it, the problem with science and scholars in search for extraterrestrial life is that mankind believes that for life to exist elsewhere in the solar system or universe, a planet should have similar climate and conditions to those of Earth." End quote. In support of his argument and in staunch defiance of the rigidly held views upon the environment needed to sustain life, a reality discovered in 1977. Hydrothermal vents deep within our oceans which belch steam from deep within the Earth's mantle, have temperatures just as hot as the surface of Venus. They are also home to countless, previously thought impossible, creatures, showing humans, especially the skeptics, that anything is possible. Since man landed on the moon, countless conspiracy theories have surfaced all over the web. Some so virulent, they spread like a virus, seeping into many areas of the media. Some of these theories, predictably, hold more water than others. Some claim we never went to the moon, this regardless of the proof that has continued to surface over the years. NASA claims to have lost the telemetry from the moon landings also. The motive behind this claim is unclear, yet no matter how unlikely, they continue to claim that it has been missing for decades. Conspiracy theorists often overlook the astonishing contributions which NASA has also made to modern society. Yet some theories actually claim a literal polar opposite of moon landing conspiracies. These not only agree that we did indeed land, walk, and even drive on the moon, but claim we have been back in secret and to explore a rather astonishing thing. According to numerous sources, the most compelling of said claims began on YouTube with the release of some extraordinary CGI footage of a claimed moon landing and the exploration of a simply gigantic alien spacecraft. Due to the moon being so difficult to reach, and the fact that anything which either crashed, landed, or was possibly even abandoned on the moon, even billions of years ago, would have been preserved in an incredible condition. In April 2007, videos began appearing on YouTube under the username retire Daff b telling the extraordinary story of a supposed Apollo 20, a secret lunar mission that had discovered the existence of intelligent alien life on the moon. Then, on May 23, 2007, Italian UFOologist Luca Scantaburlo managed to secure an interview with an individual who claimed to be the creator of the channel, a man by the name of William Rutledge who later claimed to be, in fact, himself, a retired secret American astronaut, who at the time was living in Rwanda. Rutledge claimed to be the commander of the Apollo 20 crew and to be the owner of the retired DAFB account. However, the interviewer never met Rutledge in person, as the interview was conducted over Yahoo Messenger. During the interview, however, Rutledge claimed that Apollo 20 was a top-secret mission launched in mid-August 1976 from Vandenberg Air Force Base near Santa Barbara, California. He also claimed that it was conducted jointly by the United States and the former Soviet Union. He also alleged that other missions were made by American astronaut Leona Snyder, a now-established fictitious persona, and former Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov, the first human to perform a spacewalk. The purported landing site of the mission was near Gaillot Crater, a feature near the much larger Del Porte Crater. Rutledge said the videos show that he and Leonov discovered the remains of an ancient lunar civilization. He also said they brought back artifacts to Earth for study, including a hibernating female humanoid. It is a story which we found highly compelling. China's U-22 rover, currently exploring the surface of our moon, has exposed an intriguing discovery, 
a mysterious object that many are labeling the hut. It is a cube-shaped curiosity, which oddly just appears to be resting upon the moon, as if once placed. In previous videos, we have examined similar anomalies many believe to be obelisks. We can visit other people with their habitation. We can keep track. If there's something very important to be developed from the moon, together we can explore the moon and develop the moon. We should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by the comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? With even Buzz Aldrin himself claiming there to be a monolith on Phobos, one of Mars' moons. And there is indeed a mysterious object resting on the surface of this mysterious satellite. A moon which not only appears to be hollow from one side, but is on a decaying orbit which does not make sense, almost as if it were a ghost of the past. Earthly calculations revealing that the moon should have disintegrated into Mars long ago. Yet the moon still exists, along with its mysterious so-called monolith. Yet I digress. The thing that makes these objects so interesting is how they seemingly appear to have once been placed where they have rested for untold millennia. No contact trail, no debris, dust plume, or disturbance at all. And most importantly, no crater of any form. Unfortunately, however, according to Chinese space officials, it may be a long time before the rover reaches the object, if at all. One major reason is that U-22 isn't active most of the time. The solar-powered spacecraft cannot operate during the 14-and-a-half Earth-day-long lunar night, nor for roughly 24 hours after sunrise and before sunset. U-22 also stays offline during lunar noon, as temperatures at that time can reach 127 degrees Celsius. What is this object? Further photographic study and detailed research into its precise location needs to be undertaken. It is an object which we find highly compelling. There are many unexplainable ruins upon our planet, whose age, or indeed true origins, are still an enigma to be unraveled. However, we feel that thanks to ours and many others' astute and devoted research, we do now have a very thorough understanding of past lost civilization's capabilities. In some areas, there is undoubtedly more than one advanced ancient phase of building work. For instance, we feel that the ancient pyramids of Giza, ancient relics photographed from almost every angle, now, thanks to alternative research and in-depth scientific investigations, shows clear indication of at least three phases. These three phases are also possibly evident at many other ancient sites, in particular Peru. What's important regarding these phases is that although they have undoubtedly been accomplished at vastly different times in history, they are all incredibly advanced. In fact, they are far more advanced than any ancestral attempts to recreate them, which can be found throughout our own thoroughly academically documented history. This throws up some controversial implications. For example, did this ancient civilization, just like ours, develop to a point where they were capable of space travel? Or perhaps, a more interesting posit, were these most sophisticated and indeed ancient ruins left by a civilization who actually traveled here from another planet to begin with? Perhaps Mars? Since its discovery, Mars has been the subject of countless theories regarding the possibility of past life having once flourished upon its surface. There are even those who have proposed and relentlessly searched for an ancient advanced human civilization having once inhabited its red landscape. We have indeed shared a number of Martian theories, supported by compelling physical evidences from its surface including the mystifying cleaning events which have been experienced by each rover while still able to move on the planet. 
Although many of the most compelling, possibly ancient artifacts found upon the Martian surface have indeed been covered by numerous sleuths, we feel the following object's possible identity may have been overlooked. Pictured within a NASA image known as Sol 746, presumably taken on the 746th day, it shows a perfect sphere resting in the red dust. Although noticed, its puzzling characteristics, surprisingly, have yet to be linked with one of the most recognizable UFO shapes of the modern age, the metallic sphere. These objects, not only witnessed, documented, and video recorded on nearly every continent on Earth, they have also been the object most often recorded on many inches of unexplained NASA footage from low Earth orbit, lunar, and now, we feel, much further afield. Could this mysterious sphere actually be a crashed metallic UFO? Although spheres appear in nature under the identification of land pearls, its origins would have involved tremendous amounts of water, something that has not been seen on Mars for an extremely long time. Could this mysterious sphere, photographed by NASA, actually be that of a crashed metallic UFO? We find the proposition highly compelling. The Mars exploration missions launched in 2003, successfully landing two rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, on the Red Planet. The mission's objective was to search for clues to pass water activity on Mars. The mission also included three previous landers, the two Viking program landers in 1976 and Mars Pathfinder probe in 1997. Both rovers were given an expected lifespan of just 90 days due to the notorious dust storms present on the surface. Spirit lasted an incredible seven years, surviving until 2010, yet mysteriously, Opportunity is still functioning to this day. This is due to several events which have become known as cleaning events, which over that last 14 years have been mysteriously cleaning the rover's solar panels. Designed to go offline during the night to save energy, it is during these hours that something or someone has been helping to keep our rovers running. Opportunity has since been given five mission extensions, which it has successfully completed. In July 2007, during the fourth mission extension, severe Martian dust storms blocked sunlight to the rover and threatened the ability of the craft's survival. However, when the dust storms lifted, they revealed that something had cleaned the rover of nearly all debris. On May 1, 2009, during its fifth mission extension, Spirit became stuck in the soft soils of Mars. After nearly nine months of attempts to get the rover back on track, including test rovers on Earth, NASA announced on January 26, 2010 that Spirit was retasked as a stationary science platform. Strangely, it seems, because the rover was not moving, it missed subsequent cleaning events, leading NASA to lose contact shortly after. Most recently, Opportunity has seen a surge in energy after a cleaning event in March, the Martian month coincidentally resulting in a power boost of 70% when compared with power levels at the start of this year. And now mission scientists have released a self-portrait photo of the Mars rover. When compared with the dust coverage at its worst, the difference is nothing short of dramatic. Having just survived its sixth Mars winter, thanks to the most recent cleaning event, Opportunity now has solar panels that are as dust-free as they were when they entered the Martian atmosphere. Just what exactly has been cleaning the rovers on Mars? Covert astronauts? Or maybe it's aliens? Whatever it is, we may never know.